Hey guys, welcome to freesaloneducation.com's podcast, Splitting Hairs. We are here live on a Friday <laughs> evening. What are you laughing about? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so we are here live, uh, freesaloneducation.com. We're here to talk about some of the trends. We had some crazy things happen today. We had a huge snowstorm. Yep. Um, I think they called it Hercules. It was called Hercules. So, um, so we did a lot of shoveling this morning, so we couldn't get on here, um, but we're here live for you now. We finished up our day, um, 10 hours in the salon, and now we're going to talk about more hair, but we're going to drink some nice frosty beverages as well. <laughs> um, so let's, uh, let's start off. Uh, I want to talk about the fact that we're going to give away a year's subscription to Millennium Software. So, uh, that is, uh, one of the coolest prizes we've had. The, the whole year and now we're kicking the year off with that so um i'm i'm really happy that millennium offered that to us to give to the people that are subscribing so if you haven't subscribed to our channel and this is your first time watching um this welcome. podcast welcome yeah You're welcome and also uh make sure you subscribe because uh, we're now eleven thousand strong and Solid. that's pretty cool so we're gaining a thousand new people a week and i and i can't thank everyone enough for the support and just the fact that you love education and you're getting it free here on YouTube and on freesaloneducation.com. I got Brian Hare. Hi. Um, and Barrett <laughs> Silitano. What's up? Drea Bolin. Hi. And I'm Matt Beck, and we are going to uh, break down um, some trends. We're going to break down the, uh, what else we got? We're going to talk about what, what Pantene's doing. We're going to talk about um, <laughs> the trends from the 90s and how they're fitting in today. Um, we have some things we want to talk about, consultations in the salon. We had some questions on that. We're going to answer your questions from YouTube, Facebook. Um, if you guys have questions, this is the best place uh, to put them, right on Splitting Hairs because we see them and we will definitely answer them on the next episode. Um, or if you have a question right now, you can post it on Facebook, freesaloneducation.com on Facebook. Uh, we did change it now to freesaloneducation.com because obviously we don't want to confuse people. And so we'd like all 1,700 of you, if you can, just make that jump over to freesaloneducation.com on Facebook and uh, like us there and follow what we're doing. So, all right. All right. How are you guys feeling? Marvelous. So Brian, uh, the cool thing about doing this at the end of the day, Barrett just did a men's cut faster than I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and Brian uh, had a new guest. She was in for a haircut, right? And she just walked out with everything. Super happy with everything. <laughs> um, and uh, she got balayage. I saw a uh, touch up. She walked out with three products um, so, and she was really happy. She said, and, this, and um, this is what I liked about it. She said that this is the first time she's ever came in and for the first time and the first visit was happy when she was leaving. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, she, she was a curly headed guest with, you know, she, right. she knows that someone can be off the first time that they meet. And um, I think my goal was just to show her that, you know, it didn't always have to take three times for her to like her hair. Right. You know, we didn't, I didn't sit her down and make any promises about, you know, I'm going to revolutionize your life today because she had short curly hair to begin with. But right. We talked about this is more the direction I would like us to go in the future. And I think that helped put her at ease knowing that I'm not just thinking about her today, but think about her six months from now. Well, but people got to realize, too, the most important thing that you're going to do in your daily job is the consultation. And that right. was what we wanted to talk about today because somebody asked a question about that. And they were talking about men, but really it's all in that in that lady's consultation the upgrades came from that consultation right. what is she looking for she came in for a haircut she booked a haircut she probably didn't book a color and everything else because of the fact that um she's nervous right. so she wants to see how the haircut goes first then she'll get color you made her comfortable and you pushed her and you read what she was talking about what she was looking for mm -hmm. and that's how you moved it into right. that right right i mean it was it was cool because she made my job a little bit easier. You can tell she's had a lot of consultations in her life and she knew how to sort of, you know, she, she just helped remind me of what a really good thorough consultation should be. We talked about her personal style, the way that she wants to per, be portrayed by the world. You know, this is my job, but I don't want to look like you could tell that this is my job. So that sort of helped create the, well, this is what I think we should do for you today. Right, and that, and that was the other thing I, I listened to while you were doing her hair, she was, you were using a razor and she had curly hair. And she said right away, she's like, well, most people say that using a razor on curly hair is bad. 
well, why is that? And then your explanation was great. I, you can say it now. Um, just because I liked what you said, <laughs> and I don't want to leave people hanging because they'll be like, well, why was it great? Why is it okay? Because a lot of people think that you can't use a razor on curly hair, and I liked your explanation. So what is that? Uh, well, I explained to her that a lot of times you, you have to be more careful with curly hair because of a number of reasons. One, it tends to get damaged faster and easier than non-curly hair just because of the texture itself. And two, curly hair tends to dry a little bit faster anyway. So we know you gotta be careful. You can't go into a dry razor haircut the same way you would go into a wet razor haircut. Therefore, some people can cause more damage doing it that way. Uh, a lot of people don't change out their razor blades often enough. There's just, there's so many different things that can add together to create a really unfortunate bad razor haircut on curly hair and I kind of just ran the gamut of telling her all of it she would understand that I know what could be bad about this and I'm still making the choice to do this because I know I'm gonna do this right perfect so that what that mean what that does is leads me into what what I want to talk about about this this is what everyone every hairdresser has absolutely seen this on Facebook um, you guys saw this 10 things right yeah. on yeah. So I want everybody to jump in on this because it says 10 things your stylist won't tell you. And everybody was putting on there like, oh yeah, these are things that I wouldn't tell you. This is, everything on this whole entire thing is things that you absolutely should tell your client. I'm, I'm looking through this list and it's frustrating me because it says, I probably can't give you a celebrity's hairstyle. Well, and I'm not, I don't wanna read the whole thing because everybody's read it on Facebook. But what I wanna address is, if you can't give your guest, if your guest comes in and she has, um, let's say Jennifer Lawrence's new style and she mm -hmm. gives you a picture of it and her hair is curly, short, and she doesn't like to blow dry it, then you don't give it to her and you tell her that you can't give it to her. Um, I, people get too freaked out about telling clients that they can't do something. And I think it's our job. That's what we do is to tell people that we can't do things and to push them into something that we can do. I, I have definitely, one thing I pride myself on is the relationships that I mm -hmm. I build with my guests and it's based on trust and I can tell you 100% that trust is built so much faster and so much stronger by telling them no than by mm -hmm. always telling them yes. Yeah. And then you tell them yes and you mess it up or her hair just doesn't work that way and then you lose her anyways. So right. don't be afraid. I think that kind of falls into too, like even just with your new guest, how you know you talked her into the all these upgrades well, she trusted you by the consultation, by you being truthful with her. So you started building that relationship from the first five minutes. What do you think, Drea? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, I, I think it's hard when we reach the end of the line because there's not much left to add to it. Yes. And, and okay, so, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and so, and then the next thing is, tell me exactly what a little bit means. So, oh, yeah. you know, obviously a little bit is, you need a, a little bit isn't a word you use in a consultation right. so this shouldn't even be on there a client will say a little bit because they don't know how to describe a haircut it's our job to teach them how to uh, understand a haircut or understand our mind because right. it's really every consultation is going to be a little bit different but for the most part a little bit a lot of it right <laughs> <laughs> but um but the, you need to go through with them and, and help them understand how your thought process works not necessarily that there's a scale of a little bit there's yeah. you know a lot of different ways to describe a little bit so just go through with them and and help them understand what a little bit means and what you're thinking by a little bit. well even beyond all of that you know i i like to make a joke out of it because it's just a common knowledge among non-hairdressers that hairdressers just have no concept of what an inch actually means so I make a joke out of it when they sit down and like oh I want to I want to lose an inch I tell them you know like is that a ruler inch or a hairdresser <laughs> inch and it makes right. it funny and we laugh right. and I think beyond talking about it that's that's not so much of a strictly consultation you right. know and you got to try to fix something that happened at a different salon or whatever they took too much off right. which is something you cannot fix really yeah so you need to understand how much it is. You gotta figure out how to tell them that they're always late. You gotta be nice about it. But I have a, a guest, a guy who was late a lot. He would rebook every time he left. And every time he left, I'd be like, why are you rebooking? Because you're gonna be late. So why don't you just walk in? Well, he eventually, um, I told him he couldn't rebook anymore. 
because he mm-hmm. was always late. And now he rebooks again, but he's always here. That's except for true. today, he, he didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> but just say, you know, um, explain to them why your time is valuable and why it messes everything up if they're late. I I had a guest. I uh, I was in a position where Saturday was by far my busiest day. It was the day my guests, my regulars knew not to even bother trying to ask for Saturday. You were only getting it if it was pre-booked. And I had one guest, and she was always in for very long services. You know, it was highlights and color and cut, like huge chunk. Yeah. And several times it was either no call, no show, or call the day of to say she can't make it. And at that point, you know, you're not getting anyone in 15 minutes before this big chunk of Saturday that I'm now sitting there with a really long lunch. And uh, eventually I had to tell her, you know, if this happens again, then we're just not going to be able to do this Saturday thing anymore. And it happened again, and I told her, I'm here four other days of the week. You can come in any of those days, but I, I'm sorry, I need my Saturdays. That's when all of my clients have off. I, I you know, again, if once you've built that kind of relationship with them where there's respect and there's trust and there's, you know, a understanding, then it makes it a lot easier to have those conversations as well. Well, and when people are late people, they know it. Right. Like, I don't think people want to be late. I'm a late person, and um, <laughs> and I don't. It's never a morning where I'm like, yep, totally being late today. I can't wait to be late. (laughs) You're late. You're just late. I don't know. It's like one of those things you can't figure out uh, timing. And it's my my least favorite thing about myself is, I'm sure there's a million other things, but that is the one (laughs) in my mind right now. And you just, you feel bad about it. So I think people understand. If you talk to them and say, hey, you're late, um, Saturday's important, then I think they should understand that. And we're not talking about like the first time that it happens. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, you relate, yeah. I will never do your hair again. Goodbye. Right. Like, calm down a little bit. Can you put on, uh, can we put on Facebook, what do you say to your guests when they're late? Okay. You know, I'm only. Multiple times. It's the gratitude one. That's fine. Okay. We, we only have a few on the other one right now, anyways. <laughs> Go to freesaloneducation.com on Facebook and like it. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then we'll post on the other one later. Um, Okay, uh, I love getting to know my clients to a point. I don't think that's true at all. I mean, I, so don't assume your stylist is eager to listen to you vent my guest in the holiday season. He's like, well, so how's your day? He was one of my last people on a Friday. And I'm like, well, he said something about it's got to get really repetitive. I'm like, well, if you think about it, I, I know exactly what everyone's going to ask because they're going to ask me, uh, how my holidays, do I have everything ready? Is this and that? You answer that same exact question all day mm-hmm. long. How have you been? How are very you doing? True. And it just becomes, it's a very repetitive business. The great thing um, you know, about what we do is you can create you create stories <laughs> so like it's all day like we annoy each other but it's the same story because you know it's gonna you're either gonna make them laugh or you're gonna make them do whatever and you just have the same stories throughout the day and you just I personally like when they talk and vent to me because I don't have to talk then right you know, I hate then when I, I feel them. like that I'm talking about myself too much because they've asked me so many things. I'm like, let's change the topic. What's going on with you? <laughs> right. Yeah. I always push it to them because I yeah. like hearing what they have to say. And I'd much rather listen to them than listen to myself. See, I don't yeah. mind talking all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like when they talk to me, but I, you got to stop me. I'll just keep talking. But that's a good thing. Like Forever. that is one of those things where that's how you build those relationships, you know. And if you don't talk, like I'm... I hope that they just really love my haircuts because unless I'm on a video or teaching a class or whatever, I don't really talk that much. So uh, when we're when I'm behind the chair, I'm like into my work and uh, I want to just have them, you know, going. Yeah. And I'm I'm like a robot at that point, just kind of going through the motions, but focused on on my haircuts. You're all over the place. You are just like talking <laughs> about everything. You're like, yeah, razors are cool, and I like razors. And then, bam, you're right into a conversation, which is great because you that opens you up to the relationship. I think. Yeah. So when, back when I was uh, fresh out of school, I was an assistant working at a salon, and there was this very stern Russian hairstylist there, and she was wonderful. She did amazing, amazing work, and uh, you know, she just sort of had that that Russian stoic personality about her. And after I worked with her for a few months, she said in front of me to my boss that. When they finally gave me a chair, they wanted to put. She wanted to have me put next to her, so that I could entertain her guests for her, so that she wouldn't have to talk to them. <laughs> and I was flattered by that, I guess. So nice. <laughs> I guess that's just always been me. 
I'm going to do that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just find the seat next to me and you want to say a word. Yeah. It's actually kind of, I like that environment in the salon when it's, when it's not just one-on-one. -on -one. I know there's some salons that segregate the whole entire station into a different, into separate rooms. I, I like the interaction. I like that it turns into I feel almost like we like, do that a lot too. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah. you know, you can be in the front chair or the back chair. I mean, we only have four of them, but we're all like, oh really? What'd you just say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bounce them off each other. I think it works well that way. Um, okay. And then a salon is not a daycare center. That is something a stylist should absolutely tell their guest. Um, you should, yeah, we, you have to make it known. And we've all been in that situation where there's the kid running around. I don't think it's so much that it's a, it's not a daycare center because people can bring kids in oh. if they're good kid. I mean, yeah. you got to control it, but it's just having the respect for the business. Yeah. Too. And if they're out of control, then you have to, I think you have to say something. Right. So just don't let that get out of control. Uh, put down your cell phone and your lunch. How do we feel about this? It doesn't really bother me. I like if yeah. somebody's talking the whole time, every time they're in my chair, then it's like, all right, yeah. put your cell phone down. But if it's right. a work call and I totally get it, it's happened before and I've had clients say, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I had to be on the phone, it was a conference call or something like that. It really, it doesn't bother me unless you do it every time you right. sit in my chair. And if you're interrupting the rest of the salon, right. then it's an issue. But I think if you're just on your phone, I don't think it's, Personally, for me, it's not yeah. that big of a deal. I don't mind so long as it's not in the way. Right. Like if I'm like, if I'm in the middle of cutting the right side of the head. Right. And they're answer your phone <laughs> on the left side. Like <laughs> you have two ears for a reason. Okay. I'm using this one. If they're if we're in the middle of a haircut, do not answer your phone. Well, I, Brian will cut right around. It. <laughs> <laughs> cut that thing right off. A nice little long spot right around the phone. Like, yeah, so you would like happen. the cell phone shape on your left side? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, no. <laughs> That's not how it works. This one was the one that made me the most frustrated. If you like my work, please let other people know. If you don't say that to your guest every time that they leave, then there's something wrong because you have to, you have to ask people to refer. Uh, that's mm -hmm. that's how we get our business. That's what makes us successful stylist you have to say if you like your hair please tell your friends to come here and make sure they're cool friends like you because i love you and right. i would like to do hair like yours right and it's it's doing that that's going to make it so that you can build the clientele that you want not right. just what you end up getting stuck with you've got the clients that you love mm. them so much well guess what birds of a feather get their yeah. friends too and then you're a walking billboard for my work it's crazy you they obviously should know that um, this should say 10 things your stylist will tell you. And, yeah. Yeah. and then I wouldn't have even talked about this. But it was, it's a cool thing, um, and those are really good points, I think, in our industry that need to be said, and you need, you need to follow those kind of things. All right, so we're going to put the list out tomorrow. Yeah, so we'll, yeah, we'll redo the list and put it out. <laughs> um, okay, so questions from social media. We had the one about... Uh, we're gonna do a consultation video. So Brian talked about it today. We really wanna put out a video focusing on consultation because people um, do struggle with that and it's really just asking the right questions. So we're gonna put something out that. So Shannon, Nicole, um, thank you for the question. Uh, we will be making a video to, um, to focus on that. Us. You inspired that video. Um, the how to blow dry your hair with a round brush uh, tutorial. Um, says I love this technique, but without a curl set, with a curling iron, to me, to me, this feels unfinished. This person, um, I don't know how to pronounce the name. I, the YouTube names are funny, but um, they say love this technique. It's a how to blow dry your hair with a round brush, not how to blow dry your hair and finish it with a curling iron. Set. Yeah, that would be a totally so, different video. Yeah, so I think it's a it's a struggle, but what what we're showing in that video is how you it was a brown brush set. Yeah. And Barrett mm -hmm. did it and it was a set. It's just showing a basic round brush. Right. It's something you can use every day in the salon with something that you don't have to you know, say, oh, well, now we have to put a curling iron on your hair because there are a lot of clients who come in. They don't want heat on their hair at all. They don't want an iron they don't want any kind of wand anything on well, their and sometimes hair sometimes there's no time exactly yeah. exactly so this was an easy way to show you can still get a very similar result just with a round brush yeah so i think it was a it was a cool video but i just wanted to address that because um you don't always have to finish with a curling iron set it doesn't that doesn't make a, a finish and right. then um i think this got no no we're good nope what do i got here why don't you guys talk about something? <laughs> okay. Well, 
Oh. What's that? I was going to say, uh, we had some answers on our what do you tell your guests when they are always late. Okay. Michael Taylor, I simply inform them that they are affecting other people's schedules, not just mine. But the client booked after them or the client who would have loved that slot that's now empty because you are late. Also, if it keeps happening, I start charging them for the spot even when I turn them away because there isn't enough time when they finally decide to arrive. Michael Taylor is strict. I love it. I know. I'm scared of him now. Um, Can we answer him right now, please? (laughs) Okay. Is there another one? Yeah, there's another one. All right. Uh, William Everett. The third also said, I tell them they can't make reservations until a day or so before, depending on my availability. If it becomes a problem, once they show up and are on time, then they can rebook in advance again. Okay. Those are good, too. This is what I love. I I want free salon education and people that are following Facebook. This is a community of people that are going to be able to... We're trying to make videos to inspire people to... Uh, whether they want to make videos or whatever. My next goal is to, uh, I want to start people shooting tips with their cell phones and sending them to us so that we can start throwing them up for, for everyone to see. And um, But I, I love when people jump in. I, I love that um, Michael and William jumped in on this one. I killed the table. Um, <laughs> I need a gavel. <laughs> is that what it's called? You yeah. got one. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I, I just love when people jump in and, and share their thoughts because we don't have all the answers. That's not why we're here to pretend like we do. It's just, you know, I, what is that? It's I'm like electrocuting. <laughs> it's just hitting it. Um, so anyways, thank, thank you guys for your, for your comments. Is there anybody else? Uh, Michael Thompson has uh, left us a comment on the page and he goes, love, love, love listening to you guys. It's so true have, about having to talk about the same things all day long. How was your holiday? How was New Year's Eve? I'm so bad about... Oh, I thought he was asking. (laughs) And I'm so bad about telling the same stories over and over to the point that I'm sure my coworkers are going bonkers hearing them. Yeah. That's what I said to Brian. I'm like... Trust me. What was it? Ask Matt. They'll get over it. Yeah. Wait, what was that story, though, that you kept telling? Uh, It was about my sister-in-law's grandmother cooking me a ham at 4 o'clock in the morning. (laughs) Yeah. I got so sick of hearing about that ham. Yeah. I could <laughs> recite the story about the ham over and over. But, but you know what? Every single one of my guests loved it. So. Yeah. You know what? And they had all the same reaction. It was hysterical. <laughs> so, hey, it's good. And that, maybe that's why. And what's funny is as the day went on, when I started telling it, I was telling it a little bit quieter. <laughs> so that maybe Matt didn't hear yeah, me Yeah, because so I kept much. giving you a hard time. And then <laughs> I was off the next day, right? And you're like, oh, it's so glad because then I could just tell the story out loud again. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. So um, now let's talk about, first off, if you haven't booked a ticket, for Brian, for his Bali Ombre class, you should, because it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be here. Even if you have to drive a little bit, we have bed and breakfast all over New Hope. I have a um, couch. We don't have an airport. He has a love sack. Yeah. So, yeah, um, so you guys can jump on that, it'd be fun. Um, <laughs> Brian will show you the town. It'll be a good time. Yeah. You can come on out, we'll have fun. I'm like selling a date with you. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. If that's how we got it, we'll Whatever put that works. on the flyer. That's actually double the cost, though. <laughs> Sorry, I got to make money. All right, that's cool. Uh, so, so the Bali Ombre class, go to freesaloneducation.com and buy your ticket for that. And uh, all right. And just real quick, just as one more thing to clear that up, because I, I know Bali Ombre sounds like something kind of crazy. The, the reason we came up with that is because you're going to be learning both a technique of balayage highlights and ombre in the same class. It's not one technique that I'm, I'm billing here. It's actually two techniques, both hands-on, in one class, which is huge because it's you're going to learn two great money-making techniques for the price of just one class. So yeah. bring it on. So, and one the price of one webinar on other websites. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so <laughs> um, now we have the the Mizutani Type uh, Z2. Ooh. Ooh, cool. We one, brought them out <laughs> last time, last week. And now we've been using them for a week. And Brian, first off, I haven't even had a chance to really touch them nope, because I Brian won't leave them alone. <laughs> Brian's used them. I know, but they are seriously. Uh, so we've tried some great scissors, and I know we're biased, and I know I sell them, but f- unbelievable. Yeah, I, oh, I love them. It's like, it's like they grab the hair and throw it away at the same time. Exactly. And if you've seen the video where we compare... Um, those two pairs of scissors, that's the scissor that we used for the comparison. And it just, it's seriously, you can feel it gripping there. It's a totally different type of cut. And that's, um, some people don't, uh, 
some people might be a little confused by it at first because they're used to the push of the the scissors on the hair but this this like it just grabs the hair i mean it grips it and cuts a line like awesome i to be completely honest i think one of the things that i'm loving so much about it because i'm more of a, a swivel guy which we know <laughs> we're working really? on it we're gonna get him some swivels <laughs> just, throwing just that throwing out that out there. There. just putting it out there Brian, it's i had no idea <laughs> um no, I, I think one of the cool things for me is it's cut down on the amount of time it takes me to do a scissor over comb haircut mm -hmm. because because it's not pushing that hair. The second you close the scissors, the hair that you wanted to be cut is cut. It's done. You don't have to go back and do right. the same section. Two, yeah, you're not three, drawing the line. Times. Like that section is done. Move on. Keep going. Like it's for doing the fade work between the sides and the top. Yeah. I mean, it's getting it done so much quicker. Like it's, I'm loving it, and they look cool as hell. They do look cool. <laughs> they have a, a cool little groove to them. Yeah. They're powder metal steel, which is basically what uh, Kiyoshi was telling me. Uh, and they, because he's like, I love what I love about Mizutani is they've jumped onto this free salon education. Obviously, because we're promoting them, but not just because of that. Because I'm obsessed with the technology and just learning how they're made and why they're made. And he, he gives me that. So that's why I'm obsessed with him because I can talk to him. I'll talk to him for, for an hour straight. Um, when I get home and great thing is California time. So I'm not keeping him up, but I'm like <laughs> talking to him all at like 11 o'clock at night about metals and like Josh, <laughs> which I thought Brian Hare was a funny name, but Harry Josh is even funnier. And that's Giselle Bunchen's uh, hairdresser. Yeah. And he's put out a blow dryer that we're kind of interested in. Um, obviously, it's just kind of a techie thing. Um, why it's so much cooler or whatever. Um, I don't know. It's tiny. It's, yeah. I was going to say, it looks like a travel. Yeah. Almost. Well, we also saw that on Harper Bazaar's uh, 2014 um, beauty products to look for. And um, what they were saying is that for the trend of 2014, designer hair tools are going to be oh, big. Oh, good. Fantastic. Designer hair tools. And that was the picture that they chose to put on there. Okay. So I thought that was interesting that, um, you know, just professional tools are going to be pushed more. Probably. Pushed more, yeah. Well, it's a big industry. I mean, and, you've seen you know, every company jump on it. and. Obviously, we've ne we haven't seen a three hundred dollar blow dryer, right? You know. Well, and Brian and I were on um, Harry <laughs> Instagram earlier today. Of course you were. <laughs> Sweet. Because <laughs> Brian and I, we like to find things out and then we follow them on Instagram. We're big Instagram stalkers, so. <laughs> so um, well, that's how you find but, out everything nowadays. Yeah. You're in, you're in a celebrity's life. Yeah. You know, because they're taking pictures constantly. So. But it's absolutely brilliant how he's marketed his tools because he has his celebrity uh, clients pose with... Like, well, not even post. Paltrow, he's having, he's having them posted on their own Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Like Deborah Messing using the Harry Josh. Mm -hmm. Right, it's designer. just, it's phenomenal. Well, it's the same thing. John Paul DeJoria, who owns Patron Tequila, did the same thing. He, right. You put it in celebrities' hands, you put it on movies, you do... It's, it's the greatest marketing tool you could ever think of. I mean, yeah. there's nothing that makes something more powerful than a celebrity. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to get a celebrity to hold Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so the Harry Josh oh, blow dryer, what yeah. is the other thing? That's pretty much it. I mean, it seem like- There's no professional in this whatsoever. This is the drugstore product that you know it's the multi-million dollar business and corporation well tom brady is hurting himself and having surgery so somebody's got to make the money right yeah. exactly so is. she's there but she is. so I wonder how Harry but, Josh feels. um actually the cool <laughs> thing is that uh do you think harry josh did that <laughs> I don't he know. probably I don't know. did Maybe. ask him when you call him um, yeah all right but apparently, just how Pantene chose Giselle was because she is the most sought after for hair right now. Okay. Crazy, but it's a nice color. Yeah. Drugstore products didn't do that. Nope. No. Nope. Not at all. I put this in there. <laughs> Surprise. We have Miley Surprise. Cyrus. Um, yeah. 
This was funny because everyone freaked out. They're like, oh my gosh, Miley changed her hair, but she didn't. It's no. hair chalk. No. no. They just chalked it up, made it pinkish a little bit for this cover. And for those listening to the podcast, this is the cover of Love magazine where she had her little pink mohawk going on. Yeah. yeah. But then, you know, she was back on the uh, New Year's Eve thing with blonde hair again. So, yes. uh, But Miley Cyrus definitely tore up the hair, the hair stuff for 2013. Let's see. Do you know that haircut happened in 2012? Can you believe it was that long ago? Yeah. No. It really? She's been rocking it for mm-hmm. that long. Well... Because when I was looking up crazy trends that celebrities did in 2013, she didn't come up, and I was wondering how that happened. And then when I looked up the picture of when Chris McMillan cut it off, 2012. Oh, wow. Summer of 2012. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go into now our last little segment, but this is hair from the 90s. <laughs> I had this haircut uh, the in middle school. But here's what's cool. We just found this um, on... Uh, we found that Launchpad, right? Launchpad, yeah. Yeah, launchpad.com, which I love. I love the magazine. Um, I, I connected with somebody from Launchpad at the Millennium event in Arizona, and I'm hoping to connect with her again. But I, I love the magazine. They have, always have cool stuff. The mm-hmm. website was very interesting. We found, yeah. we found this article about hair from the 90s, and what I want to talk about is the fact that this is all coming back. I'm not sure about the Rachel, but a little bit. The length. The length, length yeah. maybe not of the layers. The bulk, mm, yeah. maybe not. Not the bulk. I don't think in the '90s we knew how to take out bulk as much. I don't think yeah. so. I don't <laughs> think they minded making people look like bobbleheads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but the length. I, I mean, that's where most celebrities are chopping mm-hmm. to um, when they're chopping off their real long hair. Yeah. So, shoulder length hair, it's pretty popular. Then this was pixie cut. Yeah. So you yeah. look at that. That's definitely a big Winona deal. Ryder rocking her short hair. This is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Barrymore. The flipped oh. out bob. With the flipped out bob in the roots. Check it yeah. out. And the baby uh, bangs. And the baby bangs, yeah. I think it's so funny, though, because I don't think this is coming back to flip no. out. Because so often people come in and they're like, I don't want it to flip. Yeah, I but don't. remember, you don't remember, but do, you, do any of you guys remember cutting the flip? Mm-hmm. I mean, when I started oh, hair yeah. school, yes. it, it was, was like everyone was asking for the flip and and what I love is like a lot of hairdressers are like oh, if I take a razor and I carve it like that no. it's gonna make it flip nope. well no, no you're layering it yeah layering it will make it Wait. flip and then with a tool you want to know the picture yeah. that always did it for me it was people bringing me the picture of Reese Witherspoon <gasps> on the poster of too. Sweet Home Alabama oh yeah I used to love that, that haircut I did cool too bro. do we Give have that flip. picture no, we don't have that picture. No, we, we can't. can find it. We can find it. Do you look trust me, every hairdresser that's yeah. been a hairdresser as long as that movie's been out. I'm sure I remember. Has done that haircut. It was real short, just all flipped. Yeah, just yeah. lots of short. Yeah, and you could do it with. Yeah, it was like each like individual piece, <laughs> and they're like, "I want these they pieces." Tell me, cut my like, hair like this. <laughs> she's <laughs> posed in a magazine. It's not gonna. That's not how you walk around every day with that flip. Okay, so you poke someone's eye out. All right, so the flip. Let's try. We could try to bring it back. I like the baby bangs. I'm digging that. We have a few who come in asking for baby bangs. This is we got Britney Spears here. It's poker straight hairs. Hairs, Yeah. Is that Uh, what it's saying? Yes. Yeah. Poker straight. Poker straight straight. fried hairs. But you know what? I I don't disagree with that. Every now and then I get those people that now that we've got like the cool new irons and stuff, I'm I'm playing around and doing really 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 straight hair, and. It's given, you know, they're they're getting that effect and they're getting that look, and I'm enjoying doing it and they're loving having it. Yeah, I'm trying to tell Dre something. I didn't hear a word you just said. It's fine. But I, I didn't the, but the world did. All five. I agree. Hi world. That would have been smart enough. Yes. Saying the straight hair happens and we're good uh, with it. Oh. Baby okay, spice. baby spice. Can you tell Barrett and I are Spice Girl fans? <laughs> Yes, because I had no idea what that was. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I, don't I didn't know who it was. I mean, I, I kind of recognized it, but. I don't think this one's coming back, though, either. This was just your thing. And then it's back now. Yeah, yeah you that know? back into the sides kind of thing. It's yeah. just now we take off Out. the sides, so it's not so bulky around that halo yeah. area. Yeah, really the biggest difference now is I guess we've learned to elevate hair. Yeah, we're right. not wearing a floppy. Weight. Right. We're not wearing it as floppy. So that's, um, you know, that's the biggest difference there. We have crimped, crimped hair. hair. It tried to come back, and I don't know. Everybody tries to keep they they keep trying to bring it back, but I don't know. It hasn't. Yeah, it definitely has not, really, not stuck. I don't think it's sticking because it sucks. <laughs> yeah, but you it's can use terrible. it to do a mean sock bun. <laughs> it's just a terrible. Yeah, that's idea. true. <laughs> we crimped. 
Bear that crimped up a bun. I did crimp up a bun, but I did not leave it down like yes. And you didn't see the you crimp. Didn't, you didn't know <laughs> nope. it was crimped. Nope, you didn't. Yeah. But yeah, and the, a little bit of uh, kind of yeah. fashion color coming through. I, no, I love the color. Yeah, yeah the color's pretty. I actually I have a video coming with that. Shh. Okay. Shh. Secret. Secret. This one. Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> well, who is this? Mich- Sarah Michelle Geller. See, yeah, I look at the I butterfly look, clips. Butterfly clips all twisted back. I did this style a hundred times in beauty school. See, when I look at this picture, all I see is the awesome Spice Girls poster in the background. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I didn't even see that. But she, yeah, she has the twist back. She's using the butterfly clips. I, I think it's hilarious. I, but I do, um, I have seen a couple of styles where it's kind of twisting and the braids that are coming back, that kind of off the face. That concept, yeah. Separated. It's obviously not <laughs> this. Well, I think the big difference between then and now, really just in hair in general with all these pictures, so many of those looks, I feel the 90s, every single hair was just shellacked into place. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, the updos then looked like jellyfish with the tendrils, like the Jennifer Love Hewitt picture. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, those twists that Sarah Michelle Geller just had, there's not a hair out of place with that. You know, all of it was just almost too severe. overdone that made it look, yeah, severe. And now most of those looks have been adapted in a much messier, softer. more organic, softer kind of way. And... I'm thankful for that because it's it's a lot easier <laughs> to do. <laughs> right. I'm so happy when people come in and say, "Just give me a messy bun." I'm like, "Cool, all right." Yeah, that's when I started doing updos when they got messy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was into it then. The greatest thing I ever heard in my life: I had a bride tell me I wanted to look like I did it myself in the bathroom five minutes ago. Done. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're like great. This Sign is me awesome. up. All right, and then the last one. My favorite. Oh. <laughs> So Brian, today um, <laughs> <laughs> we discovered we discovered boy bands. Those of you that are listening on iTunes, um, we discovered uh, boy bands. Uh, well, we discovered a, a music video channel on uh, on the uh, Apple TV. TV. Yeah. yeah. So we were playing music videos all day, and Brian happened to put One Direction on. Um, thank you for that. And <laughs> you're welcome. Calling you out. And, uh, you're welcome. So One Direction was on, and then all of a sudden, all these boy bands. It was all, all boy them. bands. So we got oh, to experience geez. this today. But this is definitely, this was a style. And I I had frosted tips. Do, we, do you call them frosted tips? Yep. Oh, they, yep. that's what they were called. That's exactly so, what they were called. Um, I didn't know if in Iowa they called them. No. So, <laughs> it was. Um, so, yeah, frosted tips. Uh, highlighting cap we've talked about the leopard prints and yeah. all of that so yeah. but yeah definitely a big style if you look at the boy bands nowadays uh, in on One Direction <laughs> One Direction is rocking like GQ slick back styles right. now and don't even look at boy bands now look at Justin Timberlake yeah. now versus this yeah, picture of him in the 90s yeah I mean that root color right now is what his whole head looks like so there it is no <laughs> secrets out he's not that blonde and it's relaxed right. but he is that curly yeah, <laughs> so something's something's happening behind closed doors. But again, I mean, even that right there, I feel that is a the perfect example of how it's just it's so overdone, polished, and every spike on his hair is pushed into that specific spike. Everything's hard yeah. as a rock. Right, and now even though you know the guys of One Direction have a much more GQ look, it's a more relaxed style yeah. look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, I'm digging it. Yeah, so it now is. we are going to announce yes. the winner. <laughs> Troy oh, well. is so happy. I love So what we did winners. was we went on our Facebook and we asked um, you to pick a number. We numbered everyone that liked the photo of the Millennium, uh, Millennium logo, uh, which is right here. Uh, so you liked that on Facebook. You shared it. You went to Millennium's Facebook. You liked it there. We took all those likes. We printed them out. We numbered them. And we had you guys pick a number on Facebook. Yes. So Drea has counted it up. <laughs> yes. She's figured out the winner. And one last time, tell them what they win, Matt. <laughs> I just wanted to say that really bad. <laughs> Did you know that everyone could see you when you were doing that? So, um, so what you win is a one-year subscription for Millennium Software that's normally between 99 to $200 a month with um, tech support as well. And what I love about Millennium Tech Support is that you're gonna get, anytime you have a problem, you can call them. Um, 
I'm sure there's a limit. Can't call them every five minutes. But um, anytime you have an issue, anytime I've ever had an issue with my software, I call them and they fix it. They also are great at giving you ideas for your business because they're around it all the time um, because they always are um, supporting us and also making the business better and helps us track our numbers. You guys yeah. use it weekly. Yeah. So, Very true. Um, I know that we run that contest every every week and it's on your rebooking percentage your services per guest and your take home per guest and whoever wins that gets 20 bucks and we wouldn't know that stuff if right. it wasn't for millennium and what's funny is like it's it's one of those things that as a as the week's going on i'm not necessarily doing it for that 20 bucks but just knowing that at the end of the week i i'm looking at that it just keeps it in my brain which makes me not ever forget to ask them about oh well let's go ahead and book your next or it just it helps me be more well-rounded i have no problem with the take home that just kind of happens on its own with me comment for uh 90s hair was all about product and lots of it retail sales must have been amazing i know right especially gel and if you think about it yeah people are getting blowouts yeah yeah those were the days guys are getting frosted tips i was graduating high school <laughs> Not really, actually. I didn't graduate until say. the 2000s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm not nope. going to talk about how old I was in the 90s. Anyways, <laughs> Drea graduated in 2010. She was born no, in the I 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated in 2007. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so, um, all right. That's pretty much that. Yeah, that's is our that show. everything? That is our show. Do we have to go home? No, you have to stay here all night. Yeah. All right, cool. So, um, <laughs> to start cleaning now. So remember, check out our Facebook. Like us on Facebook, freesaloneducation.com. Stop touching the table. <laughs> um, freesaloneducation.com on Facebook. Freesalon Education on Instagram. And so at Salon Education on Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Become our friends and keep in contact with us. We really enjoy uh, the back and forth. And I uh, hope you guys like the splitting hairs because... Um, we're not doing this live because we think millions of people are going to listen. We're doing it because I, hopefully it helps you guys um, in your journey in the industry. We're just sharing our thoughts. And uh, do you guys have anything to say? No. Jared, uh, you got the music? Wait, I hold just on. Realized wait. That. We got to get him <gasps> stalking us on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Do we have, uh, did Michael Taylor write anything? Not yet. Well, oh, congrats, Michael. Michael Taylor. He probably jumped off right as we're. Uh, yeah. He got a, he got a client. Yet, no. Congrats, Michael no. Taylor. Thank you so much for your support. Um, guys, have a great night. Have a great Friday. And we will see you next week on Splitting Hairs. We, are we going to do this on Friday? Friday night's fun. Friday night I, is fun. I liked it better. So I'm why don't we do eight, eight o'clock on Friday nights? Yeah, eight o'clock Friday Friday nights. Friday nights. All right. Eight o'clock Friday nights. It's official. <laughs> I enjoyed this. <laughs> if we're done our guests. Yeah. Ar around eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah, there, there may be guests back there. There might be someone <laughs> cutting some hair back there, but I think we're going to do this again. All right, All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you soon. Check us out, freesaloneducation.com. Yeah.